heading to Kev? It's uh, Teo National Park. Teo National Park. And the place is called, they were going to an island called Colasunte. Colasunte. Yeah. We are on the, close to Sahayarvi here. We were basically just off the, off the road, parked here. We go about 700 meters, take the rope ferry, and we stay overnight on this island called Colasunte. Here we go. Teho National Park. First camp with sea kelt. Snow kelt. <laughs> Start again. <laughs> and this is my first camping trip with snow kelt, aka Kevin, my brother. And uh, yeah, look forward to it. So let's go. Heave ho! It's a sea shanty when we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, put your back into it. <laughs> Don't pay the ferryman. Don't even fix it, bruh. Don't pay the ferryman. He will get you to the other side. Cool, look at that. Right. Yeah. Good stuff. pretty much bridge okay this is our spot for the night just down by the lovely lake a nice clear patch here Kevin was saying there's some there's a lavu over the ridge there but we're gonna have a stick with nature for this one and um, start getting set up for the night Yeah, that's that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it makes a lot more um a flat plane to sleep and on. It, it makes a different shape. Mm, it does, yeah. Let's so, uh get in that end. Right. And for most down sleeping bags what you want to do is you wanna basically give them a good wish to get the air inside and let the down puff up. So how it keeps you warm. So a good idea is this to pop it into the pop it into your hammock and then just leave it be, just let, let it let it puff up by itself. Oh, nice one. Yeah, right. that looks lovely and comfy. And then now you've also got for later on, you can put your light there, your phone, your uh, toiletries, etc. Mm -hmm. When you when you're done with them, or you you don't want to have them there if you want to read or whatever, you either slip them up behind you or just push them down the, and they stay away from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good safe place, dry place for your bits and bobs. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it makes it a lot more comfortable actually, Kev. That's my view, some lovely trees. There's not much of a breeze today, so they're not really swaying, but still very beautiful. And you know, just behind Kev there, we've got some, we've got the lake, and uh, we're gonna be putting his tent up uh, just there in front. So yeah, I'm very comfortable in this. To find the start of the ridge line. Okay, and you just pull it out like so, and then we've got Prusik knots and carabiners. The advantage of a Prusik knot is just a simple knot that works on friction. So if it's no pressure on the knot, it slides easily along the rope. But if you put pressure on it and pull, it grips to the rope. So you can actually use it then for spanning out the tarp. So our first order of business is to find a small stick. You've got a loop on the end like that. And all you do is, is pass it around the tree. 
so take the long end pass a loop through and basically it just gets stopped by the stick so the stick looks like a toggle and then you can just pull the pull the loop tight against the tree. I'm going to use two carabiners and two prosic knots to, to span out the tarp and I'm going to use this third one to uh, tighten or tie the ridge line tightly around the tree. You pass your string around the back of the tree but at least at the same height as the as the uh, tree hugger and then I can let that string drop and then you simply use the carabiner and prusik knot as your fixed point to tie against and then you can pull and pull the ridge line nice and tight pinch the knot in one place and then simply do a, s a short hitch just to jam that knot in place right so this is a DD Hammocks British company super light tarp uh, it is three meters by three meters. Um, I've added rubber loops on the end of the loops. You can you could put the loop straight from the tarp to the carabiner. I like using rubber bands because it, it basically takes some of the pressure off the loop. Like so. Let me find the other corner. Simply just pull it like that, and then your hammock is completely covered. I don't use uh, line tighteners. I just use a simple knot. This is a taut line hitch and it works the same way as a Prusik knot. You have coils of rope, coils of string that go around the main string and they will quite nicely slide along the string but if you pull them at an angle they jam. So you can use it to, for all sorts of purposes. So as in this case you can stretch it out, put your peg in like so. Stretch it out nice and tight. Put your peg in like that, and then you can simply uh, pull on that, and it, the knot will hold. It goes up fairly quick as well, which is quite quite impressive. I think it's so tidy looking as well. And you're up off the ground, away from the ants and creepy crawlies, sheltered from the rain. It's a lot tidier. And uh, yeah, can't go wrong. Okay. Done. Nice one. Cheers, Kev. Yeah, no nice little home for the night in the forest of Finland. Very lightweight. The idea is yeah. it's a lightweight camping chair and it has cool. a, back, a back on it so it allows you to sit back. Like so. Yeah, good back support there. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's um, lightweight chair and a very important thing. Yeah, because if you're on your feet all day hiking or whatever, sitting on a stone or on the ground isn't. It's not luxury. It's incredibly quiet and still. There isn't even a, a slight breeze. The trees aren't even moving. It's beautiful. It's quite warm. It's been quite sunny over the last couple of days. A little overcast right now, but um. It's nice and um, warm. So as you can see, I'm just down here by the lake. Nice little cliff there. That's the view we have. Absolutely beautiful. As you can see down here, I'm pretty sure these are blueberry. This is the blueberry plant. Um, uh, yeah, there's a blueberry right there. They're all over the place. Now, there's not huge clumps of them here. Just a couple of... A couple of ones here and there, but if you were to put the time and effort in and find a good batch, you could get a couple of buckets. So now we're coming back into the camp through the blueberry bushes. Of course, I'm not educated in what you should eat and what you shouldn't eat. Um, so obviously I won't be eating anything that I don't know what it is. There's my bed for the night. Looking nice and cosy. Kev's got his tent nearly up. Once we get the tents up, we'll be cooking up a cooking up a nice meal, and then we'll have a 
we might have a beer after all Kevin's hard work <laughs> as I just walk around with the camera okay so when we're ready to settle down tonight we have a, a few treats in store so that's just some of the stuff that we have we've actually got we got some nice sausage rolls that'd be very nice we've also got Carl Fraser chocolate bar very popular bar here in Finland we've got Karoo beer 5.3 for our step twos Hope Steve Wallace will be proud of us for keeping that tradition alive. Just one each though, we're not going crazy. And of course, we have the famous Carillion pie. These are uh, a national dish here in Finland. So that's a few of the snacks we'll be having tonight. Again, we're only here for one night, so we don't need too much stuff. And we've also got some ready-made meals that we can pour some uh, hot water in. Um, so I think I've got a bolognese. And I think Kev's got um, some kind of chicken tikka uh, one as well. So that's good for a hot meal. All you need is warm water, uh, pop it in the bag, and uh, away you go. So uh, yeah, I'll be looking forward to getting stuck into those step twos later on when we're hunkering down. Okay, so yeah, so I'll just ask Kev about the Krillian pies. Um, so yeah, Kev, what are they made of? They are made of, traditionally they're made of rye, rye dough and uh, the filling is rice. You can also get different versions where the filling is mashed potato and they're traditionally eaten uh, heated up and then you hard boil eggs and then you mash the hard boiled eggs and mix it with butter and salt and then that's used as a topping and they're, they're eaten warm. And I've tried them before and they are delicious. So we're looking forward to that later. Okay, also one of the items in our arsenal is this um, traditional Finnish knife, is it Kev? Yeah. Uh, it's called a poko. Yeah, traditionally they have like this sort of like curved shape and what's what's known as a Scandinavian grind, which is basically the their ground from about the middle of the blade towards the edge. So it's the same on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, this basically gives it certain characteristics when, when cutting. But it takes a very fine edge. The handle is made from probably from curly birch, but it makes this really, really pretty wood. And um this is quite a short one. They can they can be as as long as as long as this. Mm -hmm. um, but um, this type of one is also useful for general purpose use, but also for things like carving and whittling. Traditionally, they come with a, a leather hardened leather, and sometimes there's wood inside a sheath uh, called a tuppi in Finnish. And then they're typically worn uh, on the belt on a loop. Like so, so that they're always ready to be ready to be used. Can you explain um, explain what you're doing here? And sure. So basically, this is the uh, so-called triangi trangia triangle, and uh, it's a, a windshield. This one's made from stainless steel, designed to uh, allow you to cook with your trangia gear. Normally, you can have a the trangia alcohol spirit burner that fits in here. But I like to use the, the use the gas instead. So the gas mm -hmm. bit basically fits in and slots in there. Okay. Yeah. And then you just uh, I like it because it's stable. It's low to the ground. This is just uh, regular butane propane mix, and then it simply screws on like so. All we need to do then is put some water in the pot. And uh, we heat up water for our lovely cooked meals. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's actually have my eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. Are these um, blueberries, Kev? Yes. Hmm. Edible, full of vitamin C, full of antioxidants, prevents aging. Good for you all around. Great to eat straight off the plant, take them home, make a pie out of them, freeze them, dry them. They can be used then all, all winter. Finns like to put them in their porridge in the morning, for example. Would they be considered the national fruit of Finland? Not sure, natural, national fruit, but it's, it's certainly a very strong part of the culture. And I would say, well, it has, has, has been proven it's a superfood. I was saying in early, earlier footage there about the, uh, the everyman law. Yes, it used to be called the Yoko Miehen Oikios, which means every man's right. And now to be more equal, it's simply called uh, Yokoinen Oikios, which means uh, everyone's right. Yeah, 
but cool. it be basically means that you're free to roam uh, in the woods as long as you stay away from, let's say, at least 50 meters away from somebody's property or their backyard or whatever, mm -hmm. and you don't make a nuisance of yourself. Uh, when it comes to lighting fires, you need to have the landowner's permission unless you're not, unless you're uh, lighting your fire in a designated fire spot. Mm -hmm. um, but you can pick berries and pick mushrooms in pretty much anywhere, and uh, it's allowed to do that. Uh, same for setting up tent camping and setting up a tent for the night. You're allowed to do it, but you're not. You shouldn't really stay more than two nights in a row. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so basically, you have these rights, but also you should also use, of course, common sense. Respect the land and respect the other people. Exactly. So we just wait for ten minutes now. Seal the bag. Wait 10 minutes and we should have some lovely pasta. I'll just stir first. I'll give it a bit of stir, yeah. A nice hot meal. This would be great, obviously. Especially in the winter time or when it's cold. But very enjoyable all year round. Yes. And we're going to fry up these uh, sausages. Benossi. Yep. I have my bag of condiments. So I have like a little squirt bottle of olive oil. Lovely. And then I also have salt and pepper in. Sachets, these are from a fast food, Finnish fast food restaurant called Hesburger. Yeah. It's a bit like Supermax now. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm going to be cooking anything fancier, I have uh, garlic salt, and then I also have uh, garlic and herbs. Okay, so we're just going to about to chow down on some Carillion pies, topped with um, makra. Good morning. Just eating the nice breakfast that uh, Kevin has prepared on his little frying pan. Had an okay sleep last night. First experience in a hammock. A bit more tweaking to do, I think. But uh, overall, very pleasant. No, and that uh, concludes our uh, camping for the night. It was a lovely experience for my first time camping. Um, I've been camping before, but years and years ago. And uh, we're all ready to head, head back on the trail now. And uh, of course, we've been checking around now to, to leave no trace and uh, leave everything as, as we found it. Okay, we've just been to the La Vu, but there's a, a family there just enjoying the fire, eating some sausages. So we had a nice little chat with them. And um, so we didn't stay long and I didn't, Get any footage because I wanted to respect our privacy. So we're just heading back to the uh, the, uh, the drawbridge once again. It's actually quite amazing um, um, the people that we've met here in the forest. That uh, you know the Finnish people really take pride in their in their nature, which is a really cool thing to see. And they don't damage what they have, and they they fully respect it. So anyway, we're going back on the bridge now. So I'm jump over this. Ooh -ooh. Right, finally Andy does a bit of work on this on this camping trip. <laughs> I'm the guest, Kevin, I'm the guest. Oh. On the high seas now, Kev? Yep. <laughs> I'm out of breath already. <laughs> <laughs> this plant is called Suo Purso in Finnish. It's I can't remember what it's called in uh, English, but it's related to rhododendrons, same family. And uh, you find it grown in marshy areas. And in the old days, they used to use the leaves to flavor beer, give it a flavor. So yeah, I got some here in my hand. Give it a smell. Oh yeah, They're nice. She's is very powerful. Sweet smell. Aroma coming off it. Yeah. yeah, very sweet. So you can also do things like you can put it in mm. your boots to keep your feet fresh, smelling fresh. Yeah, I can see how that would work. There's so much stuff in these uh, in these forests. You can have a feed of berries and uh, freshen your shoes. What more do you want? Beer. And a flavor of your beer, yes. Most important. 
here in Finland. The uh, forest is everywhere, but so too is the geology. Very impressive um, stone um, outcroppings and. It's all granite. That's all granite. Is it pink granite? Pink granite. Pink granite, but it has this lovely shade of grey um, and greens with the mosses. And lichens. And lichens. Which means good air quality. Yeah, I'm liking it. Hey. What varieties of trees? Um, uh, uh, Scots pine, birch, birch. spruce. Uh, that's mainly it, right, just from here. Mm -hmm. Pine, though, is the kind of dominant. It's yeah. one with the reddish, reddish trunks. Mm. Yeah, they're beautiful. And there's uh, mountain ash or, or, or rowan as well. Yeah. It's the ones with the orange berries in. Don't pay the ferryman, he will get you to the other side. Na 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 na.